Hello there and welcome to my arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela and amongst other things I'm an artist, possibly, depending on your point of view I suppose. But then perhaps, I, I say perhaps, I think all humans are artists in one way or another. It's just discovering how we express ourselves artistically or creatively. So, <coughs> my particular love are patterns and stylized motifs and quite whimsical art um, and quite abstract at times as well. And though I dip my toes into Zentangle, I'm not a Zentangle teacher or CZT, um, I love the patterns that are there and they've done some of the work of me um, researching things and looking up things and creating things at times. But I do like to explore and develop new variations of patterns as well. So how are you all doing? It's Monday morning here for me. It's the 13th of June. I'm a bit late again getting started, but I've had a couple of days where I really haven't been at all well. So I haven't been able to get any work done, but I'm determined to do this to start my day off kind of, because I have done some drawing already. Now this, which looks very pink on my, on here, and it's not pink. <laughs> it's not pink at all. <laughs> This is blue. Oh, goodness knows what's going on. I, I think I think it's me having a hissy fit. This is what I started in the last video where I'm going to create a kind of sampler of patterns. But because I couldn't carry on working with this one, I thought I'd start another one of my own. And I am enjoying doing this. I have to say I am enjoying doing this one. And yeah, the I had to put a little quote in there and it's I'm fine. And I think PHR in a dictionary or is something that stands for phrase and I'm fine not dead still alive and my EMDR therapist would love that because she thought fine as she'd ask me every week how are you Angela I'm fine okay well you know what that means to us therapists and I eventually I'd learn that it was effed up insecure neurotic and emotional to which my answer would be yeah pretty much so <laughs> you know and that was sort of like our our opening statements that you know, broke the ice a little, I guess, for me, in that I eventually admitted that was how I was feeling. It took me a long time. So, but that one's mine um, that I'm just playing around with. And not, not to leave that one alone, there's this. This is a little sketchbook that I started. I'd actually forgotten I'd coloured this first page and I'd used Neo Colours and but I think I've used gesso on the top. I can feel that feeling of gesso on there. Um, it gives a sort of like um, the, the brand I've got, which is the um, Art Basics from Prima, I think it is. Could be wrong there. Gives this sort of like almost velvety, smooth. It's a soft feeling to it. Feels different to the other paper. And this, just for information, is, I think this one is, Oh, it's five, five and a half inches by five and a half inches, which is actually quite a nice size, but it's really chunky, really thick. But I've been doing the same kind of idea. But I wanted to do this because I, I woke up this morning thinking, oh, I can have motifs like this, perhaps growing from one box into another. The problem is I've now drawn all the boxes in. I didn't do that here. Got to be enthusiastic with my pen. But... That won't stop me from doing, say, let me get that. I need a pair of glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Of perhaps putting something that is, um, how can I do one over here? Perhaps one that is made up of silhouettes. And I've chosen the wrong pen here. I've picked up a Signo DX, which for some reason has appeared here, but I'm fine with it appearing here. Because on smoother paper, it gives a very fine line, much finer than the O1. Um, from these, but if I do a silhouette instead of open like this, then I can. I'm just tidying that up while I notice something there. I would have noticed it eventually, but you, you know what it's like. So I'm just going to put a very simple kind of leafy kind of sprig here 
or at least the starts of it, that will extend over a number of squares as if I've got something growing in the frame or into the frame. Nice thing about drawing things like this is that you don't have to be exactly precise with where you put the leaves, although I do want to avoid like small overlaps or where the leaf just grazes. Um, I don't mind it grazing just within the box, but um, I, you know, it's sort of like it's making sure that things make sense. So, oh God, what a pig's ear I'm making here. And I know why I'm trying to draw with my finger on the edge of the paper. This is one of the disadvantages I have. Or one of the things I dislike about sketchbooks um, I like them for storing my artwork, for keeping it in a place where it's not likely to get lost. But I dislike having, or not being able to rest my hand on the surface I'm working on, the table, in order to draw. And that means it's far harder for me to draw. And my hand slips and moves but you get the idea and it's a bit it's a bit clunky it's a bit chunky and so on so um, I want to include things like this and um, with this one I think I might actually while I'm thinking about it while I'm here while I've got pen in hand let me have one that just curls around a little bit like that and perhaps a third branch that is just quite small just goes off to one edge like that and then my job then is to put patterns behind it now with this one I've actually used um, some of these well I've used this writer this um, zig writer um, that's it's called plum mist so it's a sort of dusky pinky kind of color and here I used a Sakura moonlight pen because um, the, there's not a pink in the moonlight and there's sort of like, this was the colour I thought would go best. Grey might have worked nicely, but I went with that one. Wish I'd used it here in some ways, but you know, I had it. But it's, it's a sketchbook, it's a sampler. Lots of shadow needed. So this is what I want to do on this here today. And I'm not going to do very much because I do have to get some to work. But I do want to share perhaps some of the patterns or a couple of the patterns I've been using elsewhere. Now I am going to start to divide these up into smaller spaces perhaps. And um, just start to do it. They're in pencil. I haven't set these in stone here. So I can alter them and change them as I need to, which will be fab. And let me go back. Which, which one was I looking at I wanted to do? Oh, I know which one it was. It's this one here. I'll do that with you. And before I do that, let me sort out my autofocus. I didn't have it on to begin with because I knew that sketchbook was going to be a bit on the chunky side. So I think I'll do it in, oh, I've got a narrow border down here. That would be the perfect place to do it. And it's the perfect place for me to fill it with such a beautiful ribbon tangle. I suppose it's a ribbon tangle pattern. So I've put a pencil line roughly down the centre of this area. I say roughly because I haven't measured it out. Now I am looking for my 03 micron here. And then what I'm going to do <coughs> is I am going to start drawing diamonds fairly equally spaced. centering on this central line and if the central line is a bit wonky as mine is well my diamonds are getting a bit wonky now 
And that's okay. Because as well as being a ribbon tangle, it can be counted, I suppose, as an organic tangle. And, well, all tangles can be a bit on the wibbly-wobbly side, can't they? If we want them to be. So it starts like this. Then, from the point, I'm not going to start at the bottom. I'm going to start from the top and I'll zoom in. Where's my zoom in? There. There we go. I'm going to start at the point of this and I'm going to draw in. It's almost like a flux in Zentangle term shape. Sort of like a, almost a teardrop shape, but it's more of a leaf. And essentially, I'm creating a heart there. So I I'm, I'm suppose I could, to make it easier on myself, actually draw the heart and then split that and just round the edges there. So that is another way of drawing this. Actually, that makes more sense to me than drawing the individual leaves because I can just come in and sort that out as I go. The more I draw things, the more I can find out how it works. So instead of drawing a straight line here, I'm going to curve one to join that, and then this one will curve down to join that. And it's the same here, is that I'm going to draw a kind of heart shape there. We'll have our two leaves. So I'll just carry on doing that. So I hope you're all okay. As I said, I've not been, I don't know what it was, like really, really troublesome digestive system. And I don't know whether it was something I'd eaten or whether it's just, well, I don't know how I could have picked something up, but you know, because I've not been with people or anything, but it's possible. And, um, or it's, could be something that was hormonal as well, and that's always a possibility. Um, more likely to be, but oh, absolutely exhausted. And I know from past experience that when I'm not feeling too wonderful, I can force myself to work. But whatever I do, I end up redoing. So it's better for me to take the time to get better and then just put that little bit of extra effort in or a little bit more time in a day to get work done. So that's where, where I'm going to be going today because I am late starting as well, honestly. And my version, my first, oh, look at that, that was a pretty scrappy thing, but it'll be fine. It works out in the grand scheme of things. My first version, I actually got where I was starting these leaves from wrong. I was starting them from the points, these, these points on the side of the diamonds. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to pop in the box here. And if the leaves are outside of the pencil lines that I've drawn, that's fine. I don't mind that. You know, they're, they're growing, so they're going to escape eventually. So, well, they would if they were real leaves. But let's just do this. And there's one last thing I want to do to finish this particular tangle, this particular pattern off. Do you realise you could have a very quick video today? That would be a first, wouldn't it? Well, it wouldn't actually. But, um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add to either side of this diamond shape here some little rounded shapes like berries or seeds. They don't have to be perfectly spherical. In fact, mine aren't. I actually don't want to take up too much space here with these. 
So I may come back and have them black with that little sparkle going on. We'll see now. The other thing I want to do is I want to add some interest to these leaves and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. In the version I did earlier, I um, just put a line with a dot through the centre of the leaf. But here today I think I may want to do something a little bit different. So I am going to um, colour these in. And I've got a sneaky suspicion that little diamond shape there may actually turn gold. I think gold would be quite nice here. But not yet. I'll sit with it and leave it. But it's quite a nice shape to have there. If you wanted these, uh, instead of being leaves, to be like a, a flower, this could actually be the central petal behind the others, I suppose. I like the contrast that these are giving. These little berries with the little highlight on them. And I'm likely to come back with a white gel pen and add make that highlight really bright. So if I end up colouring one of these in completely accidentally, I'm not going to stress too much about it for that reason. I often say this, don't we here, or I do, is that there's nothing that really can't be fixed in some, you know, in some way, certainly artistically, just needs a bit of creativity and I'm, I'm fine about creativity. So that's added some interest there. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to get my, I think, shall I use this? Let's use this because this these DXs are really fine. Much finer than the O1 microns. So I am going to split these leaves here in half. And I'm bending these lines because it helps to give a sense of um, volume to the leaves as if they are bending over. Because we know from observation in nature that in leaves the central veins are often very straight. They might have a bit of a wibble wobble on them but they roughly go down roughly the centre of the um, leaf but if you bend them you, you notice that you notice that without really analyzing it that um, that that line appears to bend so that's what we're doing here and I'm still having my morning capper so I quite like that now to add to this what I am going to do now I could put lines going this way or this way but I think I'll go this way like so and so I'll do all one side first because it's easy to keep you repeating the lines or the way the lines are going the same way right the way along these are actually horizontal or they're perpendicular almost to the, the line above. You can bend them a little bit, as I may do in some of the leaves. But along the side, these are mainly for shadow. Just to give, again, that feeling that something is, there's some volume here, is that one side's light lit and the other side is shaded. I'm doing this with line rather than colour. Now then, on the other side, I could do the same side, but as in the same side of the leaf, but I actually think I'm going to do the other side of the leaf. Like so. If my lines don't reach the edge of the leaf, I'm not going to stress about that either. It's going to keep going and if I curve them I'm going to keep that curve how did I miss that leaf 
It's easy to do, easy to fix. I'm just going to keep those lines roughly parallel to one another, roughly. And I'll try and keep the density of the lines about the same on each side of the leaf as well. Or the leaf, you know, the leaves. Because I've now split them, haven't I? Really, seriously. I'm glad I did it on this side as well. This is almost like there's light coming directly from above. You know, from this direction. So these sides will get the light, whereas this side and this side won't is what I'm suggesting with these lines. As I said, if they spill out, not a problem. Sketchbook page. It's, not, it's about getting patterns down. So I really quite like that. Now for the background, I could use alcohol markers. I very much could. But I've dug out some. I've got my this writer, which is the one I used at the top. I've also got this pen, but I've got some other colours. But I th think I'll use this. This is uh, Stadler Triplus, and I think this is kind of a dusty kind of blue as well. And what I'm going to do here to give some shadow instead of using alcohol markers, I'm not going to colour it in, but I'm going to add very fine lines to these outermost sections to darken them that little bit. I'm avoiding those little triangles in the middle, the little diamonds that we started with. So I really quite like fancy having those being metallic. Because that would be something a little bit different on here. Um, I'd have to use metallics elsewhere so it's not just a one-off thing that looks on its own. But that's not a problem really. But I will leave that though until right to the very end of finishing this page and decide what I'm going to do. It may be that I just use a white gel pen or a, one of the moonlight gel pens to fill that in. But for now I don't know is the answer. I have been doing quite a lot of slow stitching because it's something I can just sit quietly and do. Um, it's been hard to focus on drawing. As I know I'll get frustrated with drawing. Isn't it strange how when you're not very well, things that you find soothing every other time can be frustrating. And I really didn't want to get frustrated. So there we go. So that's my page now as it is. And that is where I'm going to leave it for today, I think. Shall I? No, I won't. I will start off with, I'm going to pop a, I want something that's going to grow. And I'm trying to think the best way to make something grow here. Do I want it growing from outside or from inside? I think from out, outside-ish would be a good idea. So um, I think if I start in the corner of this one and just draw a stem in, then I can pop my leaves on. And I'll do the same one, one of the same, the same kind of one that I did in my sketchbook, which is kind of inspired by either lavender or something like that. Actually, it's not. It's turning into kind of um, grass or wheat, isn't it? It's actually fine. This is the easiest way to, this is the easiest way to draw something that looks like wheat is you start with the seeds at the top and then you alternate seed shapes side to side as you go down, butting them up against one another. And you can adjust the size of them as you go and even the angle of them. And it just works really nicely. And then all I'm going to do is go back here and I will fill 
these sections in there with black and along the side where perhaps there's a very fine gap and perhaps even doing a little bit of what they call in Zentangle rounding is filling that gap in with a curve with some ink that curves downwards if you've got the space to do it I haven't got the best sized nib or even the best state of nib this nib is and this pen is a bit on the um, Have the um, flared out stage. So I'm just thickening the um, the stem there. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. So I'm going to add a couple of leaves, and I am going to bend these leaves downwards. like so and give them that kind of shape and perhaps one over like so that will work fine again I'm just going to add blackness and weight where I can I'm going to make some of these lines thicker to the left and the bottom like that and we've got that part there is to the left so we can just add that and I'm going to do the same to these where I am going to just add ink to the bottom of each of these seeds the left there and here Even though it curls up towards the right, this is still the lower part of each of these little seeds there. Or flower buds. We've got quite a stylized leaf going on here. And then I do want to give some um, lines in, in this, these leaves to help to understand this kind of structure. So I'm going to pop some lines along the top like this that start at the point and kind of follow the curve, but they're going to spread out as they get towards the bottom of this section of the leaf. So it gives it that motion that they're curling over. And then from the bottom, I'm going to do the same kind of thing, but I'm going to start the point at the bottom and have them spreading out underneath. And I may actually just sneak a couple in here and perhaps a couple of partial ones here just to increase that contrast just on the edge and where there's shadows okay and then with these seeds I am going to just pop a little line going along the bottom of each one just a little bit out from the edge just to give that hint of a shadow at the bottom you don't have to join it, it just needs to be there to give that idea that there might be almost like um, the centre bit is catching more light so it's got that rays so that's quite nice I like that as it is so the only thing that I need to do now is I'm going to put these, I'm going to draw these boxes in because I am quite happy with this and I am going to actually give these a bit of a spikiness where the, where the um, seed heads sort of poke out where I can. Just that little point. like that and I quite like that okay let's just pop these boxes in 
Um, but with these boxes, what I'm doing here is I'm deliberately varying the thickness of the line. I'm making some of the line shaky so that if I do have a sudden shake of my hand, it won't look out of place. So let me have a look. Let's go this way. There we are. So those now are set up ready for the next video we'll do. Let's twist that a little bit. There we go. And that's fine. So I hope you've enjoyed that, that you found it interesting, useful, and it's something you're going to give a go at. I really, really am enjoying this. It's a perfect way to try new patterns out, to do variations of patterns, to explore them and so on. Talking of patterns, before I leave you, me. Hopefully, yeah, there we go, unlock this. I just wanted to show you samples of slow stitching. I've left this to the end, because if this isn't your thing, you can just go, right, that's it, I'm done now. This is the one that I showed you that I was starting a little while ago. It's now finished. Most of the, that vibrant green on the back is, has gone. Um, but I'm trying to think of ways of dulling it down even more. But you can see I've used, um, I've got a piece of felt here that I've needle felted some threads on the top. I think it's silk actually, which I feel pretty bad about now. Um, you know, silkworms and so on, me being veggie and what have you. Um, these are kinds of sequins that I made myself. I laminated gold foil. Um, I've got beads, I've got threads, I've got stitching everywhere. And it's very sparkling, shimmery, and it's very much like um, work I used to do years ago. And I love, still love doing that. This is, another, this is one I finished. This took me a few evenings to do. It's a bit different. I have got felt here. But I've put some fabrics on here. This is a kind of batik pattern, batik pattern. And it's absolutely beautiful. It really is. The colours are lovely. There's, a, there's pinks and magentas. There's an olivey, yellowy green. And there's sort of like a rusty brown and this turquoise colour. So I picked the colours I wanted to use for threads up from these. I did. And um, kept to those colours mostly. I say mostly because I did this panel and then I had this calico arrived and I wanted to use that as a backing. So I did that, but also I had this stuff arrive, which is kind of a foam um, interfacing, stabilizing. It's not a stabilizer in that it's something you use to draw on or to stabilize while you stitch and then it dissolves in water, but it's really quite nice, it's foamy. And it gives a nice thickness and structure and firmness to this. So you can see I'm holding this and the fabric's not flopping. I don't need to support it everywhere, which is fantastic. So I was able to add, I added this fabric to the um, calico. And then a lot of the rest of this has been added when I've um, had the foam, you can see. So I put this sort of like silver and these iridescent beads along here. Uh, something a bit different to try and pick some of these colours up because they they sort of tie in this blue is over there and this sort of like this yellowy colour sort of appears over here but they are you know paler and different and I quite like this I quite like the way the stitching pulls this foam thinner as well so that you're going to it adds volume and where I've added stitching here you can see how it's pulling everything down so that's great. The calico is lovely. I like the neutral colour, but yesterday I had a brain fart, as it was, a, a sudden idea. I'd, oh, God. But I've got ink tense pencils and ink tense blocks, and you can dye fabric with them because, like on paper, when they're wet, they dissolve and spread. When they dry, they become permanent. And that's what I did to a piece of calico. Um, I used some teals and blues, purples, and some yellowy green here. And then the fabric I chose 
weirdly, this blue sort of tied in with the blue background. It almost disappears. This is very vibrant. I wanted something, I just wanted this flash of um, a complementary colour, something brighter. And it will eventually mostly disappear, I suspect. And the colours for the background I picked up from this little felt panel I'd found from years ago. It's black felt and then I'd needle felted some um, fibres on there. And they are wool. They're wool um, merino, it's merino tops, I think. And with some Angelina fibres in there, which is the fibre you can see um, catching the light. And so I wanted to pick those colours up, which is why the background's that colour. I can't show you, but the reverse of the fabric was absolutely gorgeous. And I was tempted to use that. Oh, there you are. You can see some of it there, where the colours were very subtle and they'd only come through in certain places. And I was thinking, oh. But I opted to use this side. And you can see I'm starting to get a bit more adventurous with this slow stitching. And oh, I learned how to do fly stitch. Blanket stitch I knew how to do, but I had to remember how to do it. Um, but that's an intriguing one to me. It would look lovely framed, and I say that, and it's not like me to say such things. This is a work in progress. I've got a lot more to do. Um, I'm just adding stitching at the moment. I've got something called, um, it's a stabiliser. It's a water-soluble stabiliser. It's a very thin film, but you can draw on it. So you know what's going to be happening. I'm going to be doing stuff like this, but in stitching. Not all of this, but I already have seen some patterns I've drawn. I think I want to try that. So that's going to be an interesting thing for me to do. It's drawing with thread, put it that way. So I hope you've enjoyed having a quick shifty at them. I'm quite pleased with them. I'm pleased with how this is growing. And I do hope you're having a go at drawing along with me and that this gives you ideas for things you can do. So, until I see you in a video again, which could be sporadic, depending at the rate of work I get done, um, please bear with me. Um, and in my next video, I'll most probably carry on with this because it's quite a nice short kind of project to do. So until I see you again, take care. Find time to be creative. ta -ra. Bye.